Milano and I am the author of Katie's Cabbage and today I will be reading a portion of my book for y'all. I sat at my desk eagerly awaiting the bell announcing the end of the school day for my third grade class. Ring! We all jumped out of our seats and ran towards the door. Remember to grab a cabbage seedling on your way out and remember to use plenty of TLC said Miss Andrews as we started to leave the classroom. Dozens of cabbage seedlings, nestled in black plastic trays, sat near the door. I spotted a small one in the corner, with three tiny green leaves, the perfect seedling. I gently picked it up and headed out to my mom and John Michael, my four-year-old brother, ready to go home. As my mom's car pulled into our driveway, I grabbed my backpack and hopped out of the car with today's math lesson fresh in my mind. John Michael followed, carrying the seedling, which he placed on the kitchen counter. I sat down at the table with a bag of pretzels, ready to tackle my homework. The first math problem mentioned gardening, which reminded me of my seedling. John Michael, let's go plant my cabbage seedling, I said. Grabbing the seedling off the counter, I ran into the garage to collect two shovels and some gardening gloves. I searched the backyard for a good home for my seedling. Under the palm tree was too shady. By the fence got too much sun. The beds with the gardenias and roses in them were too crowded. Then I spotted just the right place. It was perfect. My brother and I dug a hole. I pulled the tender seedling from the pot. Wait, I cried, we almost forgot to use TLC. What's TLC? asked John Michael, confused. We have to treat the seedling with tender loving care. John Michael nodded and we carefully dug until the hole was twice the size of the cabbage plant. We then eased the plant into the earth and filled the rest of the hole with dirt. My seedling had found a new home. I high-fived John Michael and we went back inside. My mom handed me a watering can and said, don't forget to water, sweetie. Every day after school, I checked on my cabbage, pulled out weeds that would steal its nutrients and watered the plant to help it grow. And grow it did. I was amazed at how fast. It was soon as big as a soccer ball and getting bigger and bigger by the day. Whenever my friends came over to play, they checked out just how big my cabbage had grown. Soon, the whole neighborhood began to notice. Hey Katie, what are you feeding that thing? It's almost the size of your brother, said Miss Rose from next door. Dr. Shepard agreed. Katie, that's one beautiful cabbage. But Mr. Gable from down the street had some bad news. Katie, some deer ate the shrubs in my yard yesterday. If I were you, I would keep an eye out. Would deer eat my cabbage if there was nothing to protect it? I called my grandfather, Opa, who was an excellent carpenter. He would know just how to keep my cabbage safe. Opa, Mr. Gable saw deer in his yard and I'm worried they'll eat my cabbage. He promised to help. Tomorrow after school, I'll come over and we'll build a cabbage cage. Deal, I answered. True to his word, Opa came over the next day with his tools and we built the cage. We put wooden posts in the ground, hammered nails into the boards in the shape of a large box and wrapped it in chicken wire. Hours later, when we were finished, the cage looked, well, interesting, but I didn't care about looks because I knew it would protect my cabbage from becoming a deer's snack. One night, as my family sat down to dinner, my dad asked us if we knew how lucky we were to be able to sit down to a good meal every night. Some families go to bed hungry because they don't have enough to eat. Really, I asked. I would never thought about this before. Yes, sometimes people do not have enough money to buy food. All over the world, some kids and adults go to bed hungry, my dad explained. I sat there quietly thinking about this. If kids just like me all over the world go to bed with empty bellies, then maybe I could help. I can give my cabbage to families who don't have enough to eat. It made me so happy to think of all the good my cabbage would do. I asked my mom if she would help me find that special home where it could do the most good. 
She smiled and said, of course, sweetie. And she did. The next day, mom called around and found Fields to Families, an organization that gets fresh vegetables from farmers to soup kitchens to feed the hungry. Hello, this may sound a little odd, but my daughter Katie grew a large cabbage as a school project and she would love to donate it to feed families in need. Can you help us with that? Miss Jackie, the woman on the other end of the phone said, I have the perfect home for Katie's cabbage. After school, I asked mom if she had found a home for my cabbage. Yes, your cabbage will go to Tri-County Family Ministries to feed families in need. This was great news, but I had so many questions. Where is Tri-County? How many people does it feed? When can we go there and help? Just a week later, my cabbage was the perfect size to harvest. Gigantic. Together, my family and I went into the backyard, tools in hand. John Michael had a yardstick to measure my cabbage, and my dad had a saw to cut it from its stalk and roots. I had a wheelbarrow to transport my cabbage to our car, and my mom had her camera to capture this exciting moment. I thought back to my cabbage as a tiny seedling. Now look how big it had grown with TLC. It was amazing. John Michael held the yardstick up to the cabbage as my mom took the picture. Then I gave my cabbage a hug just before dad saw the giant ball of green leaves from the ground. John Michael and I tried with all of our might to lift the cabbage, but it wouldn't budge. Dad had to help us lug it to the wheelbarrow. When we got to the driveway, the three of us lifted the cabbage into the back of the SUV and we hopped in the car, eager to donate my cabbage. I hope y'all enjoyed.